Okay, so yesterday we looked at commutative property that moves numbers, associative property that groups numbers, and we finished with identity property, which as I said is something you guys already knew. You knew if you multiply by one, you get the same number, and if you add by zero, you get the same number. So all of these are things that you've done before. We're just giving the names to them that are kind of the math rules. So again, we're gonna do two column notes. Draw a line down just underneath where you started your title. And we're starting today with zero property. You guys remember yesterday we did three properties and all three of those properties, associative, commutative, and identity, all worked with multiplication and addition, right? Mm -hmm. Today, the zero property works only with multiplication. It only has one thing it works with, multiplication. And you guys already know this. You probably just didn't know that it had a name called the zero property. Any number multiplied by zero equals, what's the secret here? What does it equal if I multiply anything by zero? It equals zero. That's why it's called the zero property. Taking a look around the room, there's two posters left that we haven't identified. Which one do you think is the zero property? Just go ahead and point to it. Good job. Okay, draw a line across. This one is our last property we're gonna be doing this week, and it's called the distributive property. I like to nickname the zero property with this name, the claw. And if you put your fingers like this and kind of make a claw like a dinosaur, go ahead and do that the claw. You'll see when we do distributive property, we draw a claw. So what the distributive property does, it shares or spreads out numbers. Sometimes kids confuse this with the associative property because it has parentheses in it. But remember, the associative property was grouping numbers that work well together. This is sharing things out. And if you look at the poster I put up for this, there's the picture of the UPS truck and the guy with the packages. What does the UPS truck do? Delivers packages to all of the houses that has, has packages coming. They're sharing out or spreading out the packages. <clears throat> so if you have something like six parentheses nine plus four, with order of operations, we've been told we should add what's in the parentheses first, which is true. You could do that. And then we would have to be doing six times 13. Do you guys know six times 13 in your head? It's not a math fact we've learned. We tend to stop at 12, right? When we're learning our multiplication tables. So here's where the claw comes in. Because the six is right next to the parentheses, that means we're multiplying it. And we're multiplying it by everything that's inside this parentheses. So we could do instead, here's where the claw comes in. Do you see how that's like a claw, right? We can do six times nine. And you'll see I do this a lot. I don't write an X for a time symbol very often. I use parentheses or that dot that kind of hangs in the middle. Because when you have two numbers right next to each other separated by a parenthesis, that means you're multiplying them. 
So I can do six times nine because I'm distributing the six to the nine. I'm also distributing the six to the four. four. So let's do plus six times four. What is six times nine? 54 plus 6 times 4 24 and we get 4 plus 4 is 8 and 2 plus 5 is 7 so our answer is 78 if we had said 9 plus 4 is 13 you guys would have all been looking at me wanting a calculator right no. were we able to do this without a calculator by sharing it out so that's one of the benefits of the distributive property. I want to show you a couple of other really cool tricks about distributive property. What if I had 7 plus 29? I could take 7 plus 29 and I could separate the 20 and the 9 inside the parentheses. So now it looks like this problem up here because I took the 20 and the 9 and I separated them. And then I can use the claw on it. 7 times 20 is 140. 7 times 9. 63. And that means that my whole number is now 203. And there's nothing wrong with multiplying 7 times 29 as it is, but you probably would have wanted a calculator to do it. By spreading it out, we can make these into easier numbers, breaking them apart in ways that we can use them. If I said 29 and I asked you to round it, what number would you tell me? 30. And how far away from 30 is it? 1. 1. It's really close to 30. I'm going to show you another trick with this. Instead of spreading this out and saying 7 times 20 plus 9, what if I said 7 times 30 minus 1? Is what is in this parentheses still equal to what's in this parentheses? 30 minus 1 is equal to 29. 7 times 30 is 210. Minus 7 times 1 would be 7. If I subtract these, I'm still going to get 203. Remember, if we are taking this, we're sharing it and distributing it and multiplying the 7 by both things in the parentheses. We don't do this very often. I just wanted to show it to you. If there's something that's really close and you want to round up, you can round up. Because it's nice and easy to multiply things by things that end in a zero, right? And then if you round up, you just have to think, how much did I round it up by? And subtract that amount out. More often, you're going to see problems that look like this. Where you can take 6 times 54 and say, all right, I don't have a calculator. But I know that 54 can be broken up into 50 plus 4. And I'm going to multiply it by 6. And then I'm going to do my claw. I know 6 times 5 is 30. So 6 times 50 would be 300. 6 times 4, 24. And now, very simply, we found it's 324. So using the distributive property, you can solve problems without a calculator that you used to rely on a calculator for, pretty simply. And it really does help build your brain muscle around math. Okay?